Today I'm taking you shopping with me at my favorite place to help decorate a home on a budget and that is the Goodwill outlet or the Goodwill bins where you pay for items by the pound. Hey there, welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tiffany. I'm a Washington realtor who has a love for creating beautiful spaces on a budget. Last week I shared with you that I had spent the most I had ever spent well, I did it again. So I came away with a lot of really fun stuff. I also came away with several project pieces, so I'll be sharing those with you. I'll show you how I might style some of the items, and as always, in the end, I will share exactly how much I spent. Thank you so much for joining me here. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Goodwill Outlet. So as I had mentioned, items here are priced per pound. So they come out in these categorized bins. It may be housewares or toys or shoes. If you find something that is particularly heavy, don't shy away from it. A lot of locations will charge you a flat rate for those heavier items to help keep the cost affordable. So don't be afraid to ask. One thing I like about picking up florals at the Goodwill outlet is if you find an arrangement and you only like one particular part of it, you can just buy that one part. One of my favorite places to find items in the bins is down at the bottom. Sometimes I find really great stuff down there. It's not uncommon to find brand new items with tags still on them.
This had been sitting in the bins the whole time I was at the store. Before I left, I noticed the brand on it. When I looked it up and saw the price, I decided to go ahead and snag it. Next stop was the furniture section. Over here, items are priced individually. I thought this vase was really pretty, but they were asking $19.99 for it. I did end up purchasing these stools here and they are very nice. When I got them home though, they were feeling very orange to me. So I decided to give them a little makeover. First step was to get these stools good and clean. They obviously had had some use. For this, I'm just using a little soap and water and a Dobby cleaning sponge. I'm removing those seats from the stools and sometimes when I go to remove things like this I just can't quite get to that screw if you find yourself in a similar situation I recommend using a longer drill bit or driver bit that way the drill is not bumping into the things around it and it allows you to get to that screw better here I'm using this dark gray spray paint in a gloss. Normally I tend to go for lower sheens, mattes or flats or satin, but because this is a stool and it's going to get touched a lot, I wanted to make sure that it was very durable and washable. And if you struggle with getting drips when you are spray painting, my best advice would be to keep that can moving and make sure that you're doing light coats of paint. It's better to do lots of light coats as opposed to one heavy coat. And if possible, I love spray painting on a turntable. I just picked up a Lazy Susan at the thrift store and I've been using that. Sometimes when I'm doing these larger projects, my hands and my wrist can get really tired from using those spray cans. So I found this attachment to be really helpful. And one trick for achieving a smooth finish on furniture is to sand and vacuum between coats of paint. Here's a look back at the before and here's the after. I feel like this made a big difference and modernized and updated these stools. was originally from Hobby Lobby and it had a price tag of $69.99 on it. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I picked up this wooden box. There are so many possibilities with things like this. This could be painted. It could have been sanded down completely. You could restain it. I just wanted to cover the lettering on the top there. So first I am removing these screws. Next, I taped off everything except the lettering. My first thought was to try this matte paint. Matte and flat paints can hide a lot, so I was hoping that it might conceal those words there. Unfortunately, it didn't quite do the trick. So next I tried this hammered paint. This has a texture to it. So again, I was hoping with a couple of coats, it might conceal that logo there. Normally when I'm doing a project where I am taping something off and painting over it, I will first apply a polycrylic to create a seal there so the paint does not bleed through. Well, I skipped that step this time and this is what happened. Because that paint bled through, I had to come up with another plan. So here I'm taking some black twine that I had on hand and I am applying a bead of glue here and I'm going to create somewhat of a trim on this. I was not happy with the coverage of that logo there. I had some ribbon on hand that I had picked up at the Goodwill outlet. I decided to glue that on there. As you can see, my projects do not always go as planned. So if something is not working out the way you want it to, just keep going and see what you end up with. Maybe you'll end up liking it even better in the end. I picked up this towel holder slash shelf and it had a price tag from the Goodwill for $9.99. It's funny, sometimes I find things with Goodwill tags on them and for whatever reason, it seems they didn't end up on the shelves and ended up going to the bins. And here I'm using these wrench pliers to straighten this out. You may be familiar with these, which are often called channel locks, and these have teeth on them and a gap, but these wrench pliers are flat and smooth. So these are a great tool for straightening items like this out. And here I'm using a paper towel as a barrier to make sure I don't damage that finish. Next, I picked up this wood round. I'm not really sure what this was originally from. It did have these little holes here, which made me think it was attached to something. And here I'm giving this a fresh coat of paint. I had these beads left over from a project last week. I'm using this black twine again. First, I'm just tying a knot in the bottom. And here I'm wrapping a piece of tape around the top and I'm cutting it at an angle. This will make it a lot easier to put those beads on this twine. Here I'm using these furniture tacks that I picked up at the Goodwill outlet. I like to pick up kind of random items like this when I find them. I just never know when I'm going to need them and it's nice to have on hand. I wouldn't recommend doing this on your slab countertops. I just wanted to make sure that you guys could see what I was doing. Once those were tapped in place, I tied these on to those tacks. I then took my hammer and fully set those tacks. I then took this bag and I cut it down to the desired height. 
I've turned it inside out and I apologize to those of you who sew. you may not want to watch this. I do not. So here I'm just running a bead of hot glue along the bottom of this to seal it. Here I'm taking another furniture tack and securing that bag in place. I also like to pick up greenery when I find it at the outlet, as well as foam blocks. If you have a room that has limited space to set things and you want to add a pop of greenery, this is one great way to do it. As I said earlier, this had been sitting in the bins the whole time I was at the Goodwill outlet this day. Before I left, I noticed that it said love sack on it. So I hopped on my phone and looked at prices and this is currently selling for $350. Next, I picked up these foam pumpkins. I didn't get super creative with this project here, but you absolutely could. You could wrap these little pumpkins in twine. You could wrap them in fabric. You could do a decoupage on these. This is a great opportunity to personalize. First, I removed those stems. I then took some paint that I had on hand and started painting these. After I got my first coat of paint on here, I could see that it was going to take a lot more work to get full coverage on these. So I just decided to go ahead and take them out and spray them. I'm using this heirloom white spray paint that I had on hand. This is a satin. Ideally, this would have been a flat or a matte, but again, I'm just working with what I have on hand. I then went out in my yard and found some little sticks to use as stems. I picked up this tray and picture frame. That picture frame there is missing the glass, but that didn't bother me. I figure I probably have a picture frame around the house here somewhere that I can snag the glass from. If not, I can always go to the dollar store and pick up a frame there. Next, I picked up this frame cork board. I found that these can be pretty pricey, so I was excited to pick this one up. Keep in mind that you can always swap out the fabric on these if you want to switch up the look. These are originally from Target's Threshold line, and they are currently selling as a set for $75. And here's a little hack for you. This is not the proper way to fix a frame that's separating, but you can use wood filler to fill that gap there if you don't want to mess with taking this frame apart and fixing it.
Next, I picked up these shelves. Now, when I grabbed these out of the bins, I did not notice that they were two different colors. So when I got them home, I decided to clean them up and give them a fresh coat of paint. I picked up these coat hooks here and they did have a little damage on them so I'm just using a sharpie to fill that in. here were originally $9.99 each from TJ Maxx and these are very nice as is in this brown. They would also look great painted white and distressed. I'm not quite sure what I'll do with them. It will just depend on what space they end up in. This wreath was very nice quality. I wasn't particularly fond of the style here so I am just going to be removing some of the items and giving it a little refresh. And here I'm using this vase filler that I picked up out of the bins this day. Once I had decided where I wanted to place each of those pine cones and acorns, I then used my hot glue gun to attach these. Unfortunately, whoever made this wreath in the past had attached their items with a glue that is white. So it was a little tricky to work around that and hide that white glue. Next, I picked up this rope basket or bin and it was very nice, but it was somewhat misshapen. So I'm going to do what I can to fix that. Here I'm taking my iron and I am going over this basket on the steam setting. Here's the before and here's the after. This is not a drastic change, but it definitely made a difference. Next, I picked up this cute buffalo check rug. It did have some damage. Here, I decided to take again my Sharpie and see if I could make it a little less noticeable. Ultimately, I decided to use this in this covered area by our front door. I frequently find really nice placemats at the Goodwill outlet, but it's rare to find full sets. So I picked this one up with the intention of using it under a centerpiece. This is also something I would hang on a wall with a grouping of baskets. Next, I picked up this topiary and I think greenery is such a great way, whether real or faux, to add some life to a space. Thank you. 
Next, I picked up this very nice down throw pillow and blue lampshade. I love how this lampshade is a little bit sheer so you can get a glimpse of that bulb in the lamp. And when I pick up items like this, I tend to throw everything in my washing machine and hope for the best. And I've been able to wash up down pillows no problem. Next, I picked up this basket with lid. It was nice, but it did have a stain on the back there. Here, I'm just using some painter's tape and taping this off. Now, I will say this type of basket is definitely not ideal for this type of project. It was pretty tricky to get that tape down in there to get a nice clean line, but I decided to go for it and see what happened. Once taped off, I took it out to spray it. Here I'm using Rust-Oleum's Chalked in the color Charcoal. And as I'm spraying here, because that tape was really hard to get into those grooves, I'm spraying directly in front of those lines to try to get that line as crisp as I could. And here's what that looked like after. As you can see, there was a little part there that did not get sprayed. If you have a piece that you've spray painted and you need to do a little touch up on it, you can do that by spraying a little bit and just using a paintbrush to touch it up. Just keep in mind that you'll need to work fairly quickly. I'm considering adding some type of trim, whether it be ribbon or something else. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. Or if you think I should just leave it as is, I'd love to hear. When I spotted this cutting board, I knew I wanted to do something with it. It was very large scale. If you've been following along for a while, you may recall that I picked this up a while back and I used the curved piece on that for another project. And today I'm going to be using these round pieces. Here I am checking the thickness of it and I'm marking just below it to make sure I don't drill all the way through. Here I'm using these calipers to measure the thickness of this and marking my bit smaller than that to make sure I am not drilling through. And here I'm using a tap to add threads to those holes. If you don't have these on hand, you could absolutely do this project with wooden dowels. styling trays or stands with groupings of items, I like to vary heights and textures. This keeps the eye moving around and creates visual interest. And candles are such a great way to cozy up a space. also picked up these gold magnets and this base filler. Before we get to the grand total of what I spent this day, if you enjoyed this video, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Now let's get to those numbers. 
taking a look at my receipt here, you will see that I paid for several items individually. Now they do charge a flat rate for rugs by size and some of these items were over three pounds. Those I was charged $3.39 and the items that were over six pounds, I was charged $6.59. For the remaining items, I paid $1.29 a pound. Over in the furniture section here, you'll see that I paid $7.99 for each of those stools. So my pre-tax total for this day was $99.27. Thank you so much for joining me here. I hope that you feel encouraged that you too can create beautiful spaces on a budget. Have a wonderful week and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.